The following events occurred 1995 in Spanish Fork, Utah. Fifteen-year-old Kiplan Davis left for school on May 2nd, 1995 and never came home. She went missing from her own high school. A decade later, one of her possible killers confessed to her murder but refuses to reveal where her body is. Kiplan has never been found. What happened to Kiplan Davis? On May 2nd, 1995, Kiplin slept in later than usual, and her parents weren't exactly happy with this as she was going to be late to her driver's ed class, which was before her normal school hours. After begging her parents to let her skip driver's ed class and then refusing, Kiplin ended up really upset over this and eventually resulted in an argument with her parents. Her father went to work, and her mother dropped her off at driver's ed and then also left for work. Later on in the afternoon, Kiplin's parents come home from work and were a little uncomfortable by the fact that Kiplin still wasn't home. Although they didn't really worry as much as they remembered that Kiplin was in drama and sometimes it required her to stay at school after hours to rehearse and etc. Although they got a little more worried when the school called to let Kiplin's parents know that Kiplin never made it to her last few classes, two of them to be exact. Keep in mind, these classes were after the lunch period. Her parents thought that maybe this was Kiplin's way of rebelling against them for the argument they had that morning, and perhaps she would come home any minute. Once evening came and still no sign of Kiplin, her parents decided to drive to her school where they found no one. At this point, a little more panicked, Kiplin's parents began calling her friends and asking around if anyone had seen her, and according to all of her friends and classmates, Kiplin was last seen by everyone at lunch, and that's about it. This means that Kiplin went missing during her lunch period. At this point, being extremely worried, Kiplin's parents go to the police station to report her as missing. Police refused to search for her as, according to them, she was simply a runaway. After going home and realizing that the police wasn't going to help, they decided to keep calling classmates and friends. This is when they eventually reached Eli. Eli was a classmate of Kiplin's and apparently interested in her. He told Kiplin's parents that he had seen Kiplin after lunch with a boy named Chris Jepson, but that he wasn't exactly sure what their relationship was. According to Eli, Chris wasn't exactly the best company. After hearing this, Kiplin's parents decided that this was a life or death situation and that it was appropriate to look through Kiplin's diary. After reading her diary, they realized that Kiplin had a thing with multiple boys from school. First, she mentioned this boy, Chris. According to her, she had a crush on Chris and she had kissed him many times before. She also had this thing with a boy named Brandon who had apparently been flirting with her even though he had a girlfriend. According to Kiplin's friends, Brandon had asked Kiplin on a date, but the day she went missing, he went up to her at lunch and cut off the date as his girlfriend had found out and was extremely upset. Kiplin didn't take this too well. But we will discuss Brandon in just a little bit. Back to Chris. After going to Chris's house, his sister was the only one home. She told him that Chris was most likely at school as he normally was preparing lights and stage for performances, and that he normally stayed there pretty late. After arriving at the school around 10.30 p.m. and finding the school locked, Kiplin's parents decided to go home. By the next morning, there was still no sign of Kiplin. This is when police finally decided to take this case seriously. They went to Spanish Fork High School and pulled out Brandon and Chris to speak with them in private. They first questioned Brandon. According to Brandon, he felt really bad for how Kiplin reacted to him cutting off their date and decided to look for her after lunch, but he was unable to find her. It is now believed that the reason Brandon might not have been able to find her is because she was already missing at that time. This means that somewhere in the last 15 minutes of lunchtime, Kiplin went missing. Police ended up finding out that just like Kiplin, Brandon never made it to his last two classes. According to Brandon, he no longer wanted to stay for school and decided to leave, but that once he left, he got a flat tired and called one of his friends to come help him change it. But when his friend was interviewed, he said that he never helped Brandon change a flat tire. As a matter of fact, he never spoke to Brandon that day. This left police with suspicion. 
but there was really nothing they could do as they had no proof that Brandon might have done something to Kiplin. The next person the police talked to was Chris. Chris said that he did in fact speak with Kiplin that day, but that after, he left her to skip school with his friends and didn't see her after that. When asked what he was doing the night Kiplin went missing, he said that he was in the auditorium fixing lights. When asked if anyone could confirm this, he said that he was with his two friends, Tim and Rucker. Police spoke to these two boys and they confirmed Chris's story. Police now had no more suspects, but they checked Kiplin's locker and realized that she had left behind all of her belongings. This means she was definitely planning on coming back. So why didn't she? Police now no longer believe that this was a runaway case, and after months went by with no details from Kiplin, rumors started going around that Kiplin was taken out to the canyon where she was raped, murdered, and buried. Police went out to search, but nothing was found. A year later, Chris showed up to the Davis home and told them that he had something to confess. The parents believed that they would finally get some answers, but as it turns out, Chris ended up taking back what he said and left. After police found out about this, they decided that this was strange and wanted to investigate further. This is when they found a very important piece of information that they somehow missed the year prior and could have changed everything. As it turns out, the night after Kiplin went missing, when Chris claimed to have been in the auditorium with Tim and Rucker, the police found out that this was not true as there was a choir performance that night, meaning Chris had lied about being there alone with his friends, fixing lights until midnight, and his friends had lied about it too. The police took these three back in and told them that they were going to give them one more chance to come clean. Tim and Rucker kept their stories, but this time, Tim said something completely different. He confessed to know who might have something to do with Kiplin's Kiplin. disappearance. According to Tim, that day, him, Kiplin, and Rucker had skipped school after lunch. They went out to the canyon, where eventually Rucker and Kiplin wandered off together. Around 30 minutes later, Rucker comes back, but Kiplin doesn't. They then take off. After being pressured by police, Tim takes back this statement and goes right back to his old story. A few years later, a jury was put together to decide whether these three teenagers were guilty or not. Rucker was found not guilty and let off while Chris and Tim were charged with perjury. A few years later, Kiplin's family declared her legally dead. This began a new trial for now the homicide of 15-year-old Kiplin Davis. In 2011, many old friends from when the men were teenagers came forward with stories against the men. One of these people claimed to have been told by Tim that he knew where Kiplin's body was and that she deserved what she got. Chris's own wife came forward and said that one night Chris asked her, What would you say if I told you that I murdered Kiplin Davis? After being told that it was possible to reach the death penalty, Tim finally confessed. His confession was that after him, Kiplin, and the person whose name he refuses to say left to the canyon, those two wandered off, and after about 30 or 40 minutes of waiting for them to do their thing, he went in to look for them as they were taking too long. He said this is when he witnessed the unnamed kid hit Kiplin in the head with a rock. After she fell to the ground, he proceeded to continue beating her. After stepping in, his friend asked him to help him move her to a nearby tree. After doing so, they left her there. A few hours later at night, they came back and realized that she was still there and she was dead. They then took her body and buried it. Even after confessing this, till this day, Tim refuses to tell police where they buried Kiplin's body and who this unnamed boy is. Many believe it's Rucker, as when Tim was a younger boy, he confessed his same story, except in this story, he said that the boy that Kiplin disappeared with was Rucker. Chris's part in this is still unknown. Tim was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Kiplin's family have begged him to please tell them where their daughter is, but he refuses. The reasons behind this are unknown, but many believe that he isn't telling the full story and that this is the reason as to why he refuses to reveal her location, as perhaps more will be found on her body. Maybe he participated in her murder. Maybe more than just a rock to her head happened. Whatever the reason behind not wanting her body found is, it must be terrible if he is willing to get more prison time just so that their secret isn't revealed.